Okay, um, so this is the um, part where I introduce um, the guest speaker. And I'll just start by saying that succession planning is critical to the survival of any business. And, um, and one can put all the plans into place, but chance plays a big part in this process. And this was no exception in the case of my own small business, McGregor Tan Research. So Jackie Thorne, who incidentally is my daughter-in-law and also the mother of three little boys aged eight years and under, so you got her hands full, will tell us today about her journey as a Rotary Exchange student to Belgium many years ago and how that experience has shaped her personally and professionally and how it led her to being the owner of McGregor Tan with her husband Tom Hannon Tan. Um, South Australian businesses like McGregor Tan uh, do provide an important do provide an important stepping stone or training ground to graduates. Zoe Bettison, who is the current Minister of Tourism, was kind enough to mention to Jackie recently her time with the company. Um, Ryan Both, who is the General Manager of Aviation at Brisbane International Airport, had his first job with us. I remember our own Peter Neal being a mentor to Ryan. Anyway, enough of that. Please welcome Jackie Thorne. for this way. I'll just get out of this one and get into mine. Perfect. Wonderful. Now just to start, my parents come from Wales. I was born on Ghana country, started my own bit, my first job and bought my first house on Nudgery land and I started my family on Mabantua land in the Northern Territory. I now live work and raise my family on Ghana country. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands we meet upon today as the land of the Ghana people and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So thank you to Rajiv and Tan for inviting me to come in and speak to you today. I've got about 20 minutes. I speak very quickly even if I'm not nervous so just if, you're, if I'm speaking too quickly for you just raise your hand and I'll try and slow down but it does sound like I've got a speech impediment if I slow down. So. I'll get into it. Um, I'm talking today for about 20 minutes on where I've come from and where I am today and the impact that Rotary has had on my life. Um, I went across to Belgium, as mentioned, in 1999. Uh, I believe Zinghai said it was quite a few years ago. Yes, it seems to be 24 years ago I was over there, which just seems incredible to me in my lifetime. Um, a couple of things I learned in Belgium. For, for those of you who've been involved in exchange programs before, please raise your hand if you know about the four Ds. The four Ds. These are the things, as a young 17, 18-year-old, you're not allowed to do when on a Rotary Exchange program. You can't drink, you can't do drugs, you can't drive, and you can't date. So I was in Belgium, the land of beer, the land of chocolate, uh, and I went to high school there. So you can imagine I, I did some of the, the above uh, mentioned things, the four Ds, but it was a wonderful uh, learning for my career. Uh, some of my notable things that happened to me when I was in Belgium, I got to place a wreath on behalf of Australian Rotary Clubs at Ypres on Anzac Day to the tune of The Last Post as the sun was rising. That is one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Um, I had friends who attended a university called Louvain-la-Neuve, which is one of the oldest universities in Europe, and got to spend a lot of time on campus not doing any of those four days. <laughs> I got to live with my first host family in a farmhouse that was built before Australia was colonised in the 1600s. So as a 17-year-old who turned 18 in Belgium, in my photograph, you can see me in the middle there wearing my dark green a rotary blazer that we collected all the stamps and, the, and the, the badges on. And next to me is a gentleman called Michael Fife. He's still in South Australia, uh, studied law and medicine. Next to him is Sarah Close. Her mother was the president of a rotary club in Gawler and she went and did a rotary exchange program in, in Denmark in the same year. And many of my friends in those photographs you would see in the media today. We've got Clementine Ford, who's a very revered author. She's up in the top there. So I can certainly say that for, for most of us who did the exchange programs, we certainly were influenced as we have grown older. Um, when I came back from Belgium, I ended up going into a double degree at the University of South Australia in business 
and in international studies, inspired by my time travelling through Europe. And then I did an exchange program to the south of France to, again, a town that's full of university students, Montpellier. And I studied at a business school called Supérieure École de Commerce, which is one of the most famous business schools in Europe. Again, all influenced by my former travel in Belgium at 18. I got my first big job at Light Regional Council after, after studying and worked with a couple of councils up there called the Clare Valley Tourism Alliance. From there, I went on to work and manage Tourism Barossa on behalf of the South Australian Tourism Commission. Commission and there's a common theme coming through. It's travel and adventures, which I certainly found when I was in Belgium. And there, I got a career break and went to the Northern Territory, and the rest is history. So, uh, in this picture, it's a terrible focused picture, but a gentleman called Bill Spur was one of my mentors through the Tourism Commission, who sadly passed last year. He was in that photograph, and this would have been my first week working in council in tourism. So I was very privileged to be influenced by some greats throughout my career. I spent a lot of time volunteering, and I noticed that the Rotary's catch cry is doing for others. And volunteering is something that's also been close to my heart throughout my career, and certainly was a value that was instilled in me from those first interactions with fellow Rotarians uh, back in the 90s. After the Barossa, I went on to the Northern Territory. So I was the youngest ever general manager of Tourism Central Australia at 31, uh, and I was the uh, second only female general manager of that organisation in 50 years. So they took a real punt on me as a young woman in an early part of my career, but uh, really helped shape that organisation. Uh, then I met a young man, uh, Tom Hanantan. I had been in Central Australia for six months, spending a lot of time out and about, learning about the culture, um, lots of trips to Tennant Creek and Uluru, and uh, spent a time on the back of a motorbike travelling from Darwin to Alice Springs uh, when we moved that motorbike down. So it, Northern Territory certainly shaped my life as well. So we fell in love. And then we had a baby. So we learned pretty quickly about those things. We spent another uh, almost two years in Central Australia with my young son, Ang uh, our young son Angus whilst I was still working. And from there... We got married. So that's, we sort of did it in a different order to many people. And from there, we had more children. And uh, we've now got three young sons, eight, six, and four. And we still love to travel. The middle photograph there with the plane was our first family holiday um, that we took the boys on a flight. It was to Melbourne. And the littlest one is only about six weeks old in that picture. So we certainly didn't hold us back uh, having children. Since then, we've done many, many trips together as a family that we've squashed in, in between business ownership and, and volunteering. Uh, last year, we took them to Europe on the canals in France and over to London to visit my family, who are from Wales. Uh, and we've taken them all over Australia. One of our favourite things to do is jump in our camper trailer and go bush camping off-grid. So we certainly walk the talk when it comes to tourism. Our first business that we opened, we'd been together for six months. And we noticed there was, a, there was an opportunity in Alice Springs for fast food and fantastic food. Tom, who's come from a research background, did a bit of desktop research and found out there was a real need in, in Alice Springs for fresh made, um, slow cooked food. And there was an American space base just outside of Alice Springs, which who really loved Tex-Mex food. So we opened the first Mexican restaurant in um, Alice Springs in 2014. The day we opened, I also launched a television campaign for Central Australia and was pregnant with our first son. So it was quite a busy time for us. Uh, so that was called Loco Burrito. We had that for four years. So we kept it after we moved back to Adelaide, but we ended up selling it. And the gentleman who's taken on board, Nick Bittar, is actually uh, really featured as one of the success stories of young business ownership in Alice Springs. I'm very proud to have been part of that hospitality story, all while we're working full time. The next... A uh, business that have, has come across my life is McGregor Tan, and, and Zinghai mentioned this company. It's, it was um, started in 1976. We have wonderful people who work for us. We have had national footprint since the 80s. We've been in the Northern Territory since 81. It is still the largest family-owned market research agency here in South Australia. We currently have 15 permanent staff and up to about 20 casual staff Australia-wide. And we've kept those numbers really strong throughout COVID as well. We, we are ISO 20252 accredited, doesn't mean much to many people here, but we do maintain our standards at an international level, which is becoming rarer in this industry. 
and I'm a qualified professional researcher under the tutelage of Xinghai. I've really moved from a marketing background into research, which I thoroughly love. So McGregor Tan's vision is to do research that makes a difference. And when uh, the speakers were speaking before about Rotary, and I, it's no surprise to me that Xinghai has come to your club, because Rotary makes a difference to the world. And research that we do makes a different to our, difference to our communities and the businesses that we work with. And why do we exist? We help our clients understand today for a better tomorrow. And what we mean by better is actually leaving the planet better than what we, we found it in. So we're very much uh, focused on doing research that makes a difference. Some of the clients we've worked with over the years, just to um, help you understand the breadth and the success of our business, We've worked with organisations such as IKEA, Chibo, OTR, which I heard on the radio this morning has since been sold, which is interesting. Um, well done to the Shahins on a fabulous South Australian business. Um, we work with almost all councils across South Australia. We are the major research provider to the Department of Premier and Cabinet. We work with the Northern Territory Government uh, and a number of uh, organisations here, lots of South Australian businesses, but nationally as well. What sets us apart as a market research agency? First of all, we're South Australian specialists. So Tom and I have lived elsewhere and have worked elsewhere, but we've certainly grown the business based on South Australia and we really commit to that. So we're members of many organisations here. Um, we also do the research for Committee for Adelaide um, for their members as well. So we're very much focused on contributing to the organisations that make this state so fantastic. We have a growth mindset. It sounds a bit like buzzwords, but what that means to me is that we're committed to growing both personally and professionally. So I've been um, accepted into an entrepreneur's program through Behind Closed Doors, which has been funded by the Office for Small and Family Business. And I'm really pleased as a, a, a female in business to be really growing as an individual and supported by government to do so. Uh, quality assurance. So in a world full of data breaches, data security issues, AI, technology, GPT, all the things that are happening, we're really committed to ensuring that what we deliver to our clients is that a standard that's an international standard and that we get audited to do so. Uh, we're also members of a number of associations that keeps our standards up, including the Research Society, the Australian Marketing Institute and the Australian Data and Insights Association. And finally, uh, Zinghai mentioned before, our commitment to student placements. So throughout my career, um, I'm now 42, so you know, I've got 20 years that I can confidently say I've worked in business. I've always given back to speaking at schools, mentoring through universities um, and helping people along like I've been helped through my career. And through McGregor Tan, we've worked with the University of Adelaide, UniSA, Carnegie Mellon and Flinders with placements into our business. And we see it as a really real reciprocal conversation. We learn from young people and they learn from us to go out and get careers. And as Zinghai mentioned, people like the Honourable Zoe Bettison has cut her teeth in our business, which is fantastic. So... I've actually just mentioned to Zinghai that I might, now that he's finished this wonderful book for your Rotary Club, he might come and write a book for our 50th anniversary, which is coming up on the influence. The people who've worked with us and the influence we've had as a South Australian success story. I just wanted to briefly mention a few projects. You know, it's easy to say our vision is to make a difference, but, and then we go and work with all these corporates. So I wanted to talk about a few projects we've done recently that I firmly believe has made a difference to the community that we live in. The first one was the campaign test. We had a call from Premier and Cabinet March 2020 around COVID and the community were, were very fearful about what was happening. People were, you know, locked in their homes, not leaving their homes and everyone was really scared for their lives. So we helped test all the campaign messaging to give the community a sense of safety. And the one that landed was called We Stand Apart United. So we helped them to develop that concept, but we also did a lot of community testing throughout COVID, which we only recently stopped doing, around how people felt about COVID. And it moved from a real fear for your own personal health to a fear of your family's health, and then it went to a fear of an economic crisis. So we really measured that month on month for three years. A recent project we did in Wyala was on behalf of Department of Energy and Mining, talking to the Wyala community about the world's largest hydrogen plant that's being built there uh, worth $600 million over the next period. And just to ensure that the community in Wyala 
have an opportunity to have, say their piece about how they feel about the opportunity and throughout that project we'll be tracking community sentiment to ensure that their needs are met by government. Top one is a speeding campaign that we did in the Northern Territory. So still to this date, 29% of road deaths in the Northern Territory from speeding. It's about 30% no seatbelts, 30% um, drugs and alcohol, 30% speeding and the rest, you know, inattentive driving and so forth. When we came to them a couple of years ago, they hadn't done speeding campaigns before. So people were not, not aware of the impacts of speeding. So we've done a behavioural change piece where we ma mapped what people's behaviours were and what their awareness was of the impact of speeding, and we've been tracking that through. So that's made a significant... It's 29% of road deaths speed related now, but it was up at about 35% prior to this work. Um, we've recently finished a national project, and something South Australia can be incredibly proud of is the container deposit scheme, about the 10-cent recyclable um, containers. We certainly were champions and started that program here in South Australia a number of years ago, decades ago, in fact. And we recently did a piece across Australia and New Zealand to the impact of the 10 cent campaigns. There are still some states today that do not do 10 cent recycling for those containers. And those containers have a perpetual life cycle. If you put that 10 cent can in a yellow bin, it goes into road, road matter. If you put that 10 cent bottle or can or aluminium can into a um, CDS or the container deposit scheme, that gets reused into aluminium and glass over and over and over. So we certainly don't put it into our landfill and we don't put it into our road and those materials. Down the bottom is a project we've been working with the city of Holdfast Bay on FOGO, food and green organics. Uh, about 60, 40 to 60% of landfill is green and organic waste. So 40 to 60% of those huge mounds of rubbish that we see could be diverted into green and organic use. About 20% is that yellow recycling. So people are quite surprised at that when they don't realise the impact food and green organic waste can have. So Holdfast is really um, leading the charge in this space. Uh, a couple of the top two were territory campaigns we've worked with about growing the territory's brand for working and in starting business, not just uh, playing and, and visitation. The middle one was Northern Territory, different in every sense. We tested that in 14 markets, of which eight were international in about six languages. And we came up with this brand in about 2019. So that's really influenced um, their visitation, except for something called COVID, which put the brakes on that, but it's back in market. And the bottom one is something that I think some of you may be aware of. With Words Grow Minds, it's, it's a campaign that's been launched aged at uh, parents of children aged zero to three, and really about building awareness for parents. If you talk, sing, play with your children zero to three, the impact that has for the rest of their lives on numeracy and literacy. This is the biggest challenge we have in, in um, supporting our children to grow up and have a you know, buoyant brain. Uh, South Australia punches below its weight. We are, we, are, we are behind the national average when it comes to numeracy and literacy in our schools and Words Grow Minds has really been pushed here in Mount Gambia and Wyala and the northern suburbs. So we've helped to develop um, the campaign materials and test the campaign materials that influence that. And we're tracking it. Um, next business. So we've had a Mexican restaurant, which has been sold. We have McGregor Tan. And in 2021, uh, we started an organisation called Exby. Uh, Zing Hai was at the launch. And that was all about customer experience. So gone are the days of just customer service in person. It's about your journey from research, from booking, from online to the experience and after. Uh, launched in 2021 and that grew into more tourism focused work, which is where my passion lies. And just uh, at the end of last year, uh, we, I started a, biz a business with some friends. Um, they've been in business for 10 years in tourism consulting across Australia. And we've just recently relaunched called the Tourism Collective. And it's about enabling tourism for a better future. It's not just about ruining the places that we love, it's about working with local community on developing those places in a sustainable and regenerative manner. So this is the most recent uh, gig and I'm very much enjoying it. We're off to Hunter in a couple of weeks' time. We just um, helped Canberra inform their 2030 strategy for Visit Canberra in tourism. And this down the bottom is all the big wigs of all the national attractions in Canberra and doing some workshops. So. I must say I've, I've really landed in the place that I love, both research and data and consulting and talking and presenting and workshops, which is fabulous.
But it's not to say that I don't have time for my family. I have a wonderful house in Millswood with a beautiful garden, 54 rose bushes, 16 fruit trees, and uh, they're wonderful. So I'm not a great gardener, but Sue is. So <laughs> Sue and Zinghai are, so they can come and help. Um, most of my, three, two of my children in school, one still in kindy this year, so they'll be all in school next year and it comes around quickly. Uh, this is me on the weekend with some girlfriends uh, in McLaren Vale enjoying some, a wine tour with friends and just family is important to us and getting out and having fun. So just in conclusion, I think if I reflect, this, this talk has helped me reflect on where I'm at in my career and where I'm at in my life. I guess they call it the midlife crisis at 40 and you think, why is it called that? It's because you get a chance to reflect on where you've come and where you're going. And just to recap, I think the three things that my Rotary Exchange taught me in Belgium was about having a sense of adventure. And to think my family let me on a plane at 17 to a place they'd never been, to families I'd never met, is quite incredible for them and for me. Um, a sense of giving back to the community through volunteering in different facets. I sit on a couple of boards and that's a way to give back. And I guess growing business and personal development is uh, really the fundamentals of that year in 1999 and where I'm at today. So thank you very much, Rotary International, for helping achieve that. What next, Jack? Oh, sleep. Um, <laughs> uh, look, I, I don't know. I think um, we've got really interesting things in our, in our sector. So I think about market research. I'm sure everyone has read the articles and probably had a dabble in chat GPT and AI and how that's going to affect uh, organisations that have data entry and analysis and marketing and those things. So for us, it's really about keeping up to speed with um, technology and being a real mover and shaker here in South Australia, ensuring that we are the best of the best um, and we work hard for that. So I think it will help shape the next AI and technology will shape our industry over the next 10 years, but we're determined to continue our business. Um, we've had it for 40, it's been around for 45 years, a great success story for South Australia. So still really committing to McGregor Tan. And the tourism collective side is I'd like that to be an international um, consultancy. I think we have the best brains in, in Australia with the seven of us working in that team. So that's the other side. I'll be jetting off all over the world, presenting at international conferences, hopefully, at some point. First, in random coincidences, you're not the only person in the room that moved to Belgium in 1999. <laughs> um, I actually started my studies at Maastricht, which just happened to be across the Dutch Belgium-Dutch border, and so for the first two years I actually lived in Belgium. Um, I, um, so you didn't do any of the four days either, did you? <laughs> um, I'm a teetotaler who actually never smoked while I lived in Netherlands. Did you drive? <laughs> so, uh, what happens in like Yeah, it, it's getting cool. Yeah. Um, okay, practical, kind of a question about like your, your part about succession. So, or a link about succession. So, from succession within youth exchange. So if you would have to advise Rotary, like who should they look out for in terms of students to select and to kind of like support to basically go abroad? So like the, mm. not so much kind of like the, from, from student side, but also from Rotary side, mm. like the, who should they basically try to support, who should try, try to basically reach out to, to essentially select as potentially youth exchange uh, mm. participants? So it was my neighbour, Lance Hatcher, who um, spoke to me when I was about 15 about Rotary, the Rotary Exchange. He identified me in my family in One Tree Hill, um, going to a school in Gawler, so, you know, we were certainly in northern suburbs. And he said, look, I think you'd really enjoy travel. And at that point, hadn't done much. Um, so he reached out to me, tapped me on the shoulder as a family friend and acknowledged that I might be someone that could do well overseas. I think you do have to have a sense of courage and a sense of... Um, self-assurance if you're going to live not with your family for 12 months. I think certainly working through some of the schools in the district that um, have identified young people. Look, we've had COVID for three years and people have been locked up. So I think the opportunity to spend a gap year overseas for a year, but whilst in the safe hands of family is really important. So I definitely work with schools. And I had to think before about what we're finding in market research and what we're finding with young people from local government surveys is the environment and our contribution to our places we live, whether it's through culture, First Nations, giving back through volunteering, is really important to the next generation coming through, age kind of 15 to 25. 
it's no longer enough for them to work because to them work is coming back to that sort of nine till five, outside of work time, don't contact me. That's certainly not the way that I forged my career. But it's what they want. They want things other than just work. They want to be able to contribute and give back. And I think the positioning of Rotary to help enable younger people to give back, particularly on projects, like the water project is wonderful, I think is a real opportunity um, for that next generation coming through. People of my age, we're knee deep in family and business. There's that sort of younger people who are looking for something more and contributing. I call it that Greta Thunberg era, where it's not good enough just to, just to have fun and party. It's about giving back. So I think identifying students that really feel like they want to give back through some of the school networks would be really important. Yep. Thank you. Um, I've been heavily involved in youth exchange over the years. We hosted about 10 different students. We, uh, our son was a Rotary Exchange student in Japan. Um, I think it's a shame that perhaps our club doesn't uh, accept and send exchange students anymore. I must admit, when you look around this room, um, most of us are a bit too old to host them these days. <laughs> host them these days. But how would you be willing to host a student in your family now with three young boys? Yeah, you I will in the future. So just speaking, just so our eldest is eight, and I think one of the best things about I had three host family experiences. Yes. One had children six and under, yes. and I was seen as a bit of a nanny. Mm. Uh, another had children my age, which and younger, which was fabulous. And one had a daughter in Peterborough on exchange while I came into their homes, yes. and that was probably the most successful exchange because the children were my age. Yes. But yes, certainly um, we could. We, oh, we will. I yeah. think it's a wonderful program to be involved in and reciprocate the wonderful experience we had. Well, I, had. I think that um, our son, when he went to Japan, it was the hardest year of his life. He didn't have any Japanese. <coughs> he went into this first host family, he went to school. No Japanese. Japanese students wouldn't talk to him because they didn't talk to him in English because they didn't, have, didn't think they were good enough. However, when he came home, he said, it proved to me I can do anything I want to do. Absolutely. And that was the biggest thing that came out of it. I didn't speak French when I went over to Belgium and I did Chinese in year 12, so for me it was, you know, a no-brainer. But I went on to, to go to a French-speaking university, which they wouldn't normally ex accept people of non-French backgrounds or non-French-speaking, non -speaking, sorry. So I think um, we underestimate ourselves and I think it really does give you that sense of um, achievement at the end of it all. Yeah. I think yeah. that, that Denis Bernard, who was here, you know, when Philip was 16, so it's about 90. 78, 76, he, he, 1986, sorry. He was going to go back to Belgium. He was from Belgium. He was going to go back and do mathematics and become an actuary. Mm. He is now 56 and what is his profession? A professional clown. <laughs> and, and it's fantastic because what he has learned, he, he's got from Rotary, is that he went back to, to study. He did his study for six months and then did an a arts degree. But he ended up becoming a clown some years later. And he got funding from Rotary to go and work with kids with cancer. And I'm, actually, my wife and I are thinking of bringing him out here because he is now working with a lot of people with dementia and he mm. finds that re they really appreciate it, which mm. is really quite interesting. Mm. But I'd like your comments. Just one more question. Thank you. My name's Julie and great presentation. It's lovely to see where you are today. Gaul is a great um, community to have that head start to set you off. Um, you're quite familiar with it, so it's lovely. With regard to being a host with young boys, I have three young boys and I was a host mum for three months for an exchange student. And I have to say, the experience for the kids has absolutely been life-changing. They've like got a sister. And, uh, you know, so if you get the opportunity to do that for your boys, yes. I'm sure you'll see that through different eyes. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. And do you keep in contact with your family, that you, families that you I, stayed with over there? I do. So when our uh, first son, Angus, was six months old, we went uh, to Europe for a couple of months and we took him to Belgium and he met the host families. And interestingly, out of the three host families, another three of those children in those host families went on to do exchanges and those families went on to host after... Um, I was their first student. So I think that sort of snowball effect of hosting families and moving through life is important. And those connections we keep. Yep. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much. Let's say okay. that. Thank you so much, Jackie. Um, on behalf of Adelaide Rotary, um, this is a little certificate thank of appreciation. <laughs> it's very, and uh, your presentation has uh, basically allowed uh, all of us to put monies into the little kitty here, and all those monies will go to our uh, youth and community projects. Wonderful. So, so you've done good today, just yeah, by being excellent. here. Excellent. So thank you again, Jackie. You, and I've learned a lot today. Uh, because we don't actually get a chance to talk about all of this stuff and other things, but no, thank you again, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you.